What's going on, Internet? The Black Okage here, aka TBH. And to be honest, I'd like to welcome you guys back to the Gaming Illuminati podcast. We are the Enlightened Gamers, and it's time for some fun on episode 121. If you're watching the video version, know this show is available on Apple, Spotify, SoundCloud, and all other ma major podcast platforms. If you're listening to the audio and you want to see the video, it's at YouTube. Actually, wait, we say we're going on the GI channel, all right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you want to announce me or should I? Yeah, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. <laughs> all right, all right. So, from now on, uh, this is episode 121. We are going to finally, I know people have been saying it, we're going to finally put the GI podcast in its entirety on the GI updates YouTube. Now, with that being said, you can still get your little segments of the hot topics that we're going to talk about on TBH's channel. But if you want to watch this for the YouTube people, for the actual people that listen to us on your favorite DSP, Spotify, Apple, what you name it, you know, that's not going to change. But if you actually watch the video version, you can get the segmented clips of certain topics that we talk about on TBH's channel. But again, the entire podcast in its entirety is going to be on the GI Updates channel going forward. And that is at youtube.com slash GI updates. Uh, also, be sure to rate the show five stars on Apple Podcasts and Spotify. Uh, we're currently sitting, I checked before we recorded, we currently are sitting at 943 five star ratings on Spotify. Now, the last episode, I told you motherfuckers, we better get to a thousand. So after this episode drops, we better get to a thousand five star ratings on Spotify. We need y'all help. It don't take but five seconds. Your five star rating on Spotify and Apple helps us move out up the algorithm. We really appreciate it. Jokes aside, be saying like motherfucker. Okay, don't take that shit seriously uh but nah seriously can we get to like a thousand i think like 1200 is actually doable after this episode uh so rated five stars on spotify and apple uh anyways let me introduce you to my co-host the first of which just stole a new high-end lg refrigerator from aldi's for his lion's den that he's working on for only 1800 bucks he was super excited every time i see tweets like that it reminds me how old we're getting utx fridge head the don say what up to the people <laughs> Rich hit the dust. Oh man, uh, I've had a very exciting weekend. I've been getting a lot of house things. With literally next week, we will be moving. Got the green light to close and all that. So for everybody uh, who's watching, you know, putting the YouTube, just uh, you know, congratulations, JG. Um, we'll make sure that y'all listening or at least in the beginning. Uh, but my mental is currently messed up because I'm watching this football game and uh, we we on the verge of becoming a meme right now. So so pray for me. Yeah, so go ahead and rate the podcast five stars on Spotify for JG's mental health. Also, it'll help us make more money so that he can pay this damn house off. Uh, my second co-host, he's been uh, going crazy on Overprime lately, which is a uh, Paragon remake. When he's not pushing mid, he's pushing Samurai Zero. Ethos, say what up to the people. And the Xbox Game Pass. Don't forget that one. Oh, uh, what's up, everybody? Yeah. <laughs> what's going on, everybody? Dang. What's going on? If you didn't hear, uh, I guess I'll announce it here, too. If you didn't hear me on my uh, live stream yesterday, whenever perspective this video comes out, um, uh, I am now full-time game dev. So, yeah. There you go. Oh, shit. Okay. Yeah. Check you yeah. out. Check you out. Yeah. Okay. So now we need more money for Ethos. All right. Yeah. Hey, hold, on. Hey, hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Because didn't I you have a boss? No, because if I were if <laughs> this guy, <laughs> you got a daddy is uh, what's the oh, name said? Uh, fucking didn't you tweet that uh, your, your wife got the job. So now you a stay at home dad. Oh, yeah. Yo, none of my got niggas it. got jobs. Yeah. That's crazy. She <laughs> 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 crazy. Oh, it's, half, it's halfway oh, a joke. It's halfway. It's halfway a joke but yeah my mom might be making some more money yes, so uh so yeah like you know might i might be staying at home you know okay. still doing this uh you know content creation stuff we'll see you know that's on the horizon hopefully Just for this lit, year bro. Yeah, must be nice financial yeah. freedom like <laughs> yes. gotta, gotta get off this debt but uh yeah we trying to make it we trying to make it we yes doing sir yes. so make sure to rate the show five stars because we ain't yeah. trying to go back to work engage with <laughs> no, the algorithm yo. yeah let's get it let's get it um I already announced the games in the last episode for January 2022. So if you want to know what free games you're getting, go look at the last damn episode. Um, so first opening conversation since the last podcast, the first big game, if you want to call it that, really it's the first game of 2022 has released the new one. It's from Ubisoft and it's called Rainbow Six Extraction. If you're unfamiliar with it, uh, a few years ago, Ubisoft held an event inside of Rainbow Six Siege called Quarantine, where basically some zombies attacked. It was a PVE mode you could play with some friends. It got it was OK. It got a, it got a really strong response, a positive response. And Ubisoft being Ubisoft, they said, you know, 
we see how much you guys love this game mode what we're gonna do is we're gonna take that game mode that was included in the original rainbow six siege for free as an event and we're gonna charge people forty dollars as a standalone game now it is available on game pass you do not have to buy it so if you own the game pass you can get it on pc and xbox for free or ten dollars a month you know um but yeah it's a new cooperative uh strategical cooperative it's not it's not uh, zombies anymore they changed it to aliens alien shooter where you have to extract objectives survive with teammates uh reward you with like upgrades and stuff like that full blown title for 40 dollars. how we feeling about this jg uh so uh, i'm gonna say this and i'm sure ethos is going to attest to this if this wasn't on game pass though <laughs> i don't know man i don't think that too many people will be playing this game uh first of all i was under the impression that this was just going to be like an expansion of rainbow six itself but it's not it's its own standalone game and it's 40 bucks uh from what i played i don't think that it's worth the 40 bucks so for all the people that have it on game pass like this is this is you know the reason why you will be playing this or even you know trying it out because i wasn't even going to try it out like i've seen it i knew it was on the horizon but i wasn't initially interested but you know ubisoft always you know gives us codes to uh to play their game so I was like okay you know what let's let's try it out let's try it out so uh with me and ethos and uh and dx shout out to dx then we played um on uh i think we actually played release day the official release day or the day before release and it had its moments um i i wasn't initially like sure what we were supposed to do or like you know what the actual objectives are it's kind of like a roguelike it's like a first person roguelike uh in a sense like you go into you know whatever city like you start off in new york and you have like three different levels so you like do those and then you constantly just keep going back to you know get uh get higher points so that you can level up your operators and and uh ultimately you know get better gear and stuff for your operators and then ultimately like so that you can unlock the the other levels like there are sub objectives that you also have to do in order to unlock these other levels so i thought that that was you know an interesting concept and then the objective like the main objective they have to do or like procedurally generated so like they're not the same every time that you go in there like one time uh we were playing on a harder difficulty and we actually had like a boss encounter uh that we had to do at the very last you know portion so i thought that you know some of those uh concepts were interesting but i just think overall like i'm just i'm just not interested in this game i don't think that this game has enough from what i played that's going to keep me into it like i just felt like besides when we were playing on the harder difficulties it was still like overall like you know a, a pretty easy game like it was just go through uh you know do an objective and then you decide whether you want to extract or, or keep going but unless you're playing on the harder difficulties like i didn't i didn't really see the the uh the full challenge of playing this game and then for me personally i don't like you know the roguelike concept i know the ethos uh when it comes to certain games like he enjoys that concept but i really don't like i don't i don't enjoy this this roguelike aspect i don't want to just keep going in and playing the same levels over and over and over so uh for me like i just don't think that it's it's worth it and then for 40 bucks on top of that uh for even people that you know are rainbow six fans or you know just were interested in the game i don't think it's worth 40 bucks so if you got the game pass you know i will try it out because there's nothing else to play right now until february uh february is going to be absolutely insane but uh you know this is just to hold you over i don't think that it was worth it but you know i do like the the cosmetics that they have in there they actually have better cosmetics than uh actual rainbow six they have like the majority of operators in there and uh and you know some of the levels were were kind of cool that we played but i was just like uh, i was i was extremely bored besides like the little moments in me those in, in dx played yeah this is this is the type of game and the reason why i originally was like slandering the game pass because this is a quintessential oh try it if you got game pass this is not worth the the full asking price that they add like it's it's one of those games when i had been playing it like a couple weeks before it even had came out because we got early codes at g4 and originally i wanted to score it a two out of five but i'm glad i kept playing it and the more i started to understand it but i refused to give it we ended up giving it a three i refused to give it anything higher than a three for the simple fact that it got a three because mechanically it works but outside of that like it's 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 the same shit the way the characters move the operators they didn't even like they could at least change the operators them give them some new special tools to handle the aliens or something like that like just add some type of dynamicism to it but it, it wasn't there and then like there's certain mechanics from rainbow six siege well all the mechanics they're in this game but it's like it doesn't work as well in my opinion we're like you know um 
like the the reinforcements on the wall right so like you still get two reinforcements i feel like you should have got more i feel like each operator should have probably got at least like five but you still get two and then if you're playing with a full team of three that's six um that's six what's the name uh reinforcements the problem is the aliens are spawning from all over the fucking place so if you put the reinforcements on the wall it doesn't matter you're still gonna get hit from some angle because there's it, it seems like the way they designed the maps there's more breakable walls from at least when i remember compared to like rainbow six so like it just like i understand they were trying to go for like more of a strategic feel but it didn't really feel strategic to me it felt like as long as you got a good shot and you take out the nest you'll be fine then you extract the uh the, the, the actual objective or whatever the fuck it is but like it was like i wouldn't say it's a bad game it was just like eh, why does this why does this exist i think this would have been much more appreciated if they just put this in as a game mode inside of rainbow six siege maybe charge like ten dollars for people who really want to play it or make it free but there's no reason why this game should exist for forty dollars it's lazy and it's one of the reasons why i think ubisoft has been getting clowned they just keep it's, it's an excuse to reuse assets but i'm done ranting about it what, what you think ethos I agree. Um, I think it's solid. It's just a solid game. I don't think I really had like any like positive or real negative opinions to it either way. Um, I did see some of the tactical aspect of it where I think it could get interesting on like really like harder difficulty stuff. Um, the like bossing that me and JG ran into that one time, that was actually pretty cool. Uh, but like if this is something I feel like I'm going to like put like a ton of time into, probably not. Like I'll probably play like two to three more times, get a little bit further and then I'll probably not play it again. Um, I think it has some good ideas. I think it's executed, like what you said, like just decently. Like it, it's just, it's competent. That's the best way I describe it. It's just a competent game where it's like you just don't got anything to play. I say give it a shot. And like you said, it's on Game Pass, so you really don't have much to lose. But yeah, I find it, I would find it very difficult to like try to justify or tell somebody, like, hey, like if you're on PlayStation or whatever it is, and you don't have, you know, or you don't have Game Pass, like, yeah, you should shell out $40 for this. Um, I do agree, like, if it had been, like, a $20 expansion for Siege or something like that, and it just been added on to Siege's game mode, like, as a separate, like, PvE single-player type of experience, I think it would have been received a lot better. Um, because it has a lot of content inside of it, it's just, you know, I just don't think it's, it's as engaging and as thrilling as, like, Rainbow Six Siege is from, like, a PvP perspective, so. Yeah, I think it, it, it lacks the thrill because it's AI driven and the and Ubisoft is notorious for shitty AI. The aliens all run in a similar matter for the most part. So it's like you kind of know what you're getting as long as you're. I, I will say it's interesting to hear. Um, <laughs> it's interesting to hear that y'all said that like it was easy for y'all because when I was playing, it was hard. But I think I realized <laughs> there's some I, now that I'm on the other side. There's a little truth to the gaming journalism thing because like the people I was playing with, it's funny. Oh, they refer to me as like the shooter guy because I don't even feel like I'm I'm the strongest shooter amongst gi i feel like i'm just kind of competent in the middle but like like amongst gaming journalists i like i'm like an elite player. <laughs> like it was a lot of times i was caring so it felt like it was hard uh <laughs> compared to maybe if i would have played with y'all maybe i would have had a little bit more fun but even still i still couldn't see myself scoring it higher than a three for the simple fact it's just competent it doesn't do anything innovative there's a story there but like it's like i didn't care like it was just some dialogue while you're walking into a mission, there was one cutscene at the beginning. Um, it just is Ubisoft. It felt like Ubisoft was like, we need to get something out this quarter because uh, we got bills to pay. So let's reuse these Siege assets because people love buying skins in Siege. Uh, but if you ain't got Game Pass, I'm not recommending this game. Doesn't mean it sucks, but it's a Game Pass game. Yeah, it's a. I love that that's yeah. becoming a term now. It's game a. Pass it's game. a Game Pass game. Like <laughs> you got buy, rent, wait don't buy it and you got game pass I, th I feel like game pass and rent would be in the same bracket because yeah, like same area. yeah um but yeah that's uh if you don't have any other thoughts jay we can move on uh for rainbow rainbow six Extreme. yeah yeah i just i yeah i don't recommend it y'all like i said if you got game pass if you believe in ethos when it got you an xbox or something cop it <laughs> other than that Absolutely. just leave it alone bro wait till february please yeah. mm. hey but hitman hitman uh is on the game pass highly recommend picking that up it's a great great buy even jg uh, 100% jg should 100% be playing the hitman trilogy 100% it's a stealth game you bro. might like it too you might I, like i played too. hitman you played all three uh i played the last two in the remake oh, you should play three you should play three uh three is like i think the best one that's the name um let's talk about like, this is with the this hold on this is with the new ones right is that what you're talking about ethos yeah the, the, the whole new trilogy new trilogy yeah it's all packed yeah one all of them I, yeah that's in my backlog i'm definitely going to uh play those because i i love the uh the original hitmans 
So oh, uh, yeah, you're really? right. But I haven't played any of the new ones. Yeah, I haven't played any of the new ones. But I play. I played the original trilogy. They're stealth games. Uh, I'm not gonna lie. They're pretty hard too. That's interesting. No, I mean, here you go. <laughs> I know. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I'm not bad at every stealth game. Okay, like there are still there are still stealth games that I do enjoy. And Hitman was like especially fun for me because like you know the many ways that you can complete an objective. I think that 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 was the most fun for me. Like I, obviously I couldn't go you know guns blazing and just kill everybody. But like once I found like the perfect way to like you know. Uh, you know defeat my target then you know that's what made the game fun okay 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 we'd like to see that jg play through uh agent light skin seven um let's talk about <laughs> <laughs> let's talk about what really matters the talk of the town the biggest news of the week i'm calling it the activision microsoft saga um so for those of you living under the same rock as patrick star Microsoft announced that it plans to acquire Activision for $69.7 billion, which is a lot of fucking money. To put that in perspective, I believe the Minecraft deal was only for like $8 billion or a million or something like that. And then the Facebook was only $1 billion. Uh, so like this is like one of the biggest deals we've ever seen. Also, just for clarification, because I, like, I see a lot of different articles it's they're they're trying to acquire them but the deal hasn't gone through there's a whole bunch of steps they have to go through i don't see any reason why this deal wouldn't go through um but like keep in mind like you remember when um not activision but t-mobile announced they were going to merge with uh with sprint it took like two years for that shit to happen uh so like it's not going to happen overnight but like um it's like a 90 something percent chance this shit's going to go through and because they, they must be pretty confident with the, with them announcing it publicly but yeah damn near 70 billion dollars with that that means microsoft owns the entire activision catalog um with big titles like um of course call of duty um spyro crash freaking um let me look up what other x activision games look at it i did not know that uh i looked it up earlier activision owned x-men mutant academy did you ever play that nope that was a, that was a great kind of thing game. yeah i don't think i did but but, but 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 yeah they get they get all the big activision games how are we feeling about this initial announcement jay I actually did play X Men Mutant Academy. Um, so obviously, like you already mentioned, like you know, when anything happens, uh, ac uh, acquisition wise, yes, it does take a while. But you already know, like this is still big news to you know just wake up and see. Like it literally had like Twitter just ablaze, just the internet ablaze. Like this is a huge freaking move. Like seventy billion dollars ain't no play money, and I kept saying that like this is this is crazy and uh it, it automatically made me wonder uh you know if activision would just by itself if activision blizzard because that was already like you know uh you know uh, a uh, a a merger there uh which happened you know years ago but that was major when it happened i wonder if activision like by itself like how much is activision just worked like if blizzard wasn't uh on top of this but uh you know that's that's neither here nor there because that's just speculation at this point just just curiosity but this is a freaking major um you know everybody was wondering like what's going on with call of duty and we'll get through everything i don't want to uh you know jump to the other topic that we have involving this but it's it's major like uh i mean we've been making the jokes about phil spencer being thanos right now but that nigga really is thanos right now like I, we thought that bethesda was huge he's literally saying hey like all right the studio that we have now can't make the games so we're just going to acquire everybody else and just make the games ours and you know i, I can't be mad at it because microsoft has a ton of money clearly to just throw around i mean this came not even a full year after the Bethesda thing happened. So I wonder how long that they've been, you know, thinking about making these type of moves. Cause this is just insane to think about. And obviously, you know, we're really gonna be thinking about five, 10 years down the line about console wars, like, or console wars even gonna be a thing now because all of these freaking studios are gonna be under Microsoft now. And I don't think that they're done. That's even, the, that's even uh, you know, the more crazy thing. We were talking about the rumors about possibly Microsoft getting Sega, like they're not done. They're gonna end up acquiring everybody and it really is gonna be Thanos and the Infinity Stones. Like this is absolutely insane. Like Call of Duty, it's freaking huge. You know, no, no matter how much we feel about it right now, but everybody keeps talking about Call of Duty. I mean, Overwatch, uh, we talked about Overwatch too, not being the best, but Overwatch in his prime was freaking huge. Starcraft is still huge world of warcraft no matter how you feel about that that's a freaking historic franchise diablo is freaking historic and, and i mean you got candy crush too like when you think about that they got freaking candy crush so it's a lot of I other, activision like, little... published sekiro i'm looking Did at the, yeah i'm looking at it they published it i don't know i wonder how that works and 
Do they own the, the rights? Yeah, the do they no, own the they rights to the characters? Is it still for software? No, they do not own the rights to Sekiro. They helped publish the game for from software, but they didn't like. So it was like a distribution deal, basically. That they don't yeah, like they like so they used, because they used uh, like if you check it on Steam, it says excluding Japan and like I think like and some Asian countries. Um, that's because I think Bandai publishes in different territories. So on the mm. West, they used Activision as their publisher. They help it just distribute it into the West. But it wasn't like Activision gave them money to develop Sekiro from software. Did Overwatch, it. Prototype. That's interesting. Yeah, World some sub so that was us. So that was just mainly us, like for the US Activision handled that. Yeah, uh, some, like, I know Bandai has uh you know Neo and in, in Neo too. Yeah, but even if that Neo, even if that is just US, like think of the pop possibilities. Cause what I was thinking about, I didn't see nobody um say this online, but like I've always wanted to see Microsoft kind of throw their arena in the platform brawler, like I would love to see them do some type of Smash Bros competitor, but like Microsoft, Microsoft, like lacks, Microsoft lacks Microsoft lacks the original IPs outside of Gears, Forza, Halo, and Fable. They didn't have enough like original IPs when you Halo versus the damn Lamborghini. But now that they require Bethesda as well as Activision, it's like they got more than enough characters to produce. And like I was just like, okay. Maybe we could get that Sekiro Ninja versus the Forza Lamborghini, you know? That shit could be lit. Spyro and Crash, they wouldn't end up in PlayStation All-Stars. They'd end up in that damn Microsoft shit. Now that uh, they got uh, Activision as well as they got the Overwatch characters. Like, imagine, like, fucking Tracer and uh, fucking, you know, all the other damn characters from the game. This this is this is a bigger deal than people try to put on. Not to mention that they, 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 have, they own fucking Call of Duty, which is like arguably one of the biggest games if not top five of all time whether or not you like the damn game uh and what they do with it that that it's gonna be interesting um what you take all those those go ahead can i ask something really quick for jg yeah. jg mm -hmm. how relieved are you right now bruh <laughs> I'm literally, yeah. I was, I was sweating <laughs> while we were, while we were. Doing I just looked the score like, up. Your boys yeah. won. Yeah. <laughs> Bro, I, I didn't want to yell, we, I didn't wanna yell but during that last minute, we did some crazy <laughs> shit, dog. Like I'm, just, I'm sitting there, like I gotta look at the replays. Like I was halfway paying attention, but I'm sitting there, like with my mouth open, like, oh my god, <laughs> how did we do this? So it's, it's freaking ridiculous. So yeah, why? This is literally like live, you know, live action. Yeah, people like, are smoking Brady packs like, on the timeline. So I was like, let, let me let JG let like a big. We, like, we almost blew it, bro. We were selling, we, we, we were selling some homes, right? Uh, throughout that entire second half, it's ridiculous. Oh, but, but in any case, yeah. But go ahead, you thoughts. All right. Anyways, um, so this is about the Activision deal, right? Yes. Um, yeah. Smash Bros. thing, absolutely. I think they should totally do it. Um, they need to honestly do some um, cross pollination between games. I would love to see a Master Chief skin in Doom, uh, Doom Eternal. Um, I'd love to see Doom being a, like a maybe a skin in Halo Infinite. Like they could do a bunch of cool stuff. I think now they have all this IP. Um, you know, it'd be cool to see like Master Chief maybe in like a a Call of Duty game. Um, I think the coolest thing about this whole deal, which I find very interesting, is like the possible collaboration within studios of like having studios like making different franchises instead of the ones that have always made them and allowing them to like nurture and try different things with those franchises now that they couldn't before um i remember how like when bethesda got acquired everybody was like so excited because uh, uh obsidian the guys who do all, like all the good rpgs they did uh they were the ones behind new vegas for fallout but bethesda owned the rights to it so they could never make a new vegas 2 but now that bethesda and obsidian are both under the same umbrella under microsoft that could happen now like we could get a new vegas 2 by uh obsidian so that's what i'm looking for too uh i know we're going to talk about different things especially about like call of duty i think there's a topic about that specifically but i'm very curious to see like what potential like combinations of studios might end up doing different ip that they've never done before because yeah. i'm telling you those 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 activision studios deserve to try something different i know they're tired of doing the same shit for the past decade and like let them do something different yeah i'm gonna jump all over these stories so let's like deep dive sure. on this so one of the first things is Sony made an announcement. They made a statement. Uh, uh, you know, they're butthurt. Uh, and they basically said that they expect Microsoft hold to honor the What do you be butthurt to if you lost $20 billion in stock? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. That was what, on the notes, too. You, <laughs> like, you, you, know, you know, the funny thing is about like this shit is like it goes to show you I, I, this story, like kind of showed me how many people don't actually understand some of the business side of things, because like I saw, I saw, like, I saw a lot. Yeah, the they just yep. participate in the console war. I saw a lot of Sony ponies. Well, Sony's going to come back and they're probably going to buy Ubisoft. And I'm With like, what? I, Sony, what? I, I hate to break it to you. I love I what love money? Sony exclusives, the people listening. But Sony don't got Microsoft money like they're they're balling in a different league. 
league, bro. Microsoft could buy Sony out. They could buy <laughs> all of Sony if they wanted to. That man could literally clap Low Sony key, and, take, and take the entire company if they had, they have that much money, man. I think the only yeah. companies that make more money than Microsoft is Apple and Google, maybe? Apple, Amazon, Google. Oh, yeah, like, Amazon, fighting, Apple, Google. Yeah, but they, they're Microsoft them, is top it. five. They're top five. Yeah, they they're they're the got a different five. type of money. Uh, so I'm like, nah, Sony can't. Cause, cause they have trillions. They have trillions. Of outside of their, PlayStations, their people their and value. maybe like their cameras, like Sony phones, TVs, they don't really sell that well. Like Sony is, it's a big company, but it's not Microsoft level as people think. Um, so I thought that was funny seeing that shit. Um, but I, I seen a tweet from Frost and she said, it's kind of like what you were saying, JG. We're like, they got two Infinity Stones now that were Bethesda and Activision. They about three Infinity Stones. Yeah, be, be before they become Bethesda, they keep spending this money and it became, uh, I seen people's talking about uh monopoly like how do y'all feel about that like do you do you feel like that would be a problem if microsoft acquired all these studios and it would hurt gaming as a whole like monopolizing the situation no short term mm. no i don't see no. it because one i one they don't even own a majority of the market like from a money standpoint they're fourth they're still fourth by acquiring activision they reached fourth place so they're not even close to even acquiring like a, a vast amount i'd be more concerned if let's say like let's say they did buy sony out then yeah i'd be like okay uh this is looking kind of spooky now but like them buying up activision even though like Activision, i think was the biggest publisher like now nah, i don't they're not close to it yet i think that's just people just trying to have an excuse to like make it like try to make it as negative as humanly possible without understanding yeah. the business implications I'm, yeah, I'm, the yeah. sony ponies what you laughing at because the uh, sony ponies like i'm trying to insane. wrap my brain yeah. my brain around this they like for can. the people who listen like remove yourself from gaming and we're talking about the world business microsoft is in about 95 percent of homes in the world because of windows and i'm gonna be honest i don't think anything is ever going to overtake windows like we've kind of just accepted that in our life like just take yourself out of the xbox and understand that's the type of money and how many homes they penetrated you got what linux and then apple has its own software but like they they own a small market in terms of like actual computers like they're in a lot of homes on top of with the xbox so they got they got big checks they can blow um yeah but okay oh, you gonna say something uh, Jay? also i i agree with ethos like if we got into situations where they're acquiring their direct competitors then yeah like we need to hit the panic button because it might get a little spooky but on the other side of the coin and like i you know briefly mentioned before like i think five ten years down the line like this whole console war mess is going to go away i think we're i think we're finally going to get to that point where it, it's not going to be a thing because we're already seeing sony you know with their own uh game pass competitor and you know they're putting their games on pc now and i tweeted like as soon as this happened i was like i think this only needs to rethink this whole window with putting their you know first day titles that yeah, they're coming out with change. on the pc yeah yep. they need to change it nice because change. that one year two year crap that that ain't not gonna, gonna work, work. No more. that's not it's gonna, not gonna, gonna fly. work so we so they really need to change up their formula and i was also asking about nintendo and people brought up good points even though i still don't i still don't agree with it but i understand like nintendo still technically doesn't have to do anything because they really haven't been com they haven't been competing with anybody like you no. have pokemon you have nintendo like they literally just run that that part of the market with you know the little kids and uh and the nostalgia kick that Create they really people just look to nintendo everybody. for creativity yeah so it's so like they don't really need to do anything like this doesn't really affect them with Microsoft just, you know, acquiring every dev studio and every publisher. Um, but yeah, I, I don't think that we need to hit the panty button right now. I don't think that we, we need to worry about a monopoly with Microsoft acquiring studios. Microsoft, which is literally at a point, like I mentioned before, that they just haven't been able to come out with those killer IPs. And they just keep, you know, hanging on the same IPs of Halo, Forza and Gears. So it's like, fine, what else I'll are you going to do? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like fine. Yeah, like fine. I'll just, I'll just spend I'll the bread, and then I'll just, yeah, you know, I'll just buy everybody else. So then we could just get that money, and then we can get all these other studios to possibly, you know, like, uh, like you mentioned, pollinate, uh, cross pollinate between, you know, the titles that they already have and some new titles that could come out. Like just, just get those good minds together who's created this, you know, iconic games, and then just, you know, make stuff under the Microsoft banner. So Microsoft just gets all the money for it. Yeah. For here's the game. truth. Okay. Oh, sorry. Uh, I was gonna say here's a truth that i feel like you know i will say is that if this had been on the other foot and sony had done this i would have been concerned simply because sony and this is the major reason why i feel like if you're not a fanboy of like the console wars or whatever is or of sony or of playstation if you really objectively think about it as a consumer this is good for you too because if sony had done the same thing and acquired activision no way they would have done this in reality but if somehow let's say if the foot had been on the other shoe, or Earth shoe had been on the other foot, yeah if it had been an earth two type shit 
um, and Sony had picked up Activision, I'd have been concerned because Sony right now, their whole thing, ecosystem, is very closed wall. It's a closed garden. You got to be in the PlayStation ecosystem. You got to have a PlayStation, this piece of plastic in order to be in this ecosystem. It's only just recently because they've been getting bullied by Microsoft to open up and expand. That's the only reason they've done that. If if Microsoft didn't do this, this is the idea of competition. If Microsoft hasn't done any of these moves that they did, I guarantee you Sony would still be doing the same shit that they've been doing for the PS4. Dropping for uh, exclusives on the PlayStation 5, never letting anything come to PC, sticking on that console. And they would have just kept doing this perpetually probably forever. Um, but Microsoft, which is the good thing, I think this has forced sony that like your walled exclusive like that doesn't fly anymore nobody wants that and that's why i think it's a positive is i'd rather have this go to microsoft where literally their ecosystem is so crazy right now like you could be at any aspect of like the gaming space and you can play their games that's the cool part you're not locked down to a piece of plastic you're not locked down to a specific area that you have to go to to get it you can go pretty much your phone you can go to your console you can go to your pc and you can play these games and i think that's like really important to point out here compared to sony and maybe sony five six years maybe catches up to this but they have no choice now it's not a matter of uh this is why i think jg saying i agree with it the model of making these tight tight very good first person not first person these very tight a first party exclusive games it does not work in this world anymore we do not live in that reality anymore microsoft has basically bought that reality now like you cannot live that way anymore and microsoft right now value wise is an insane proposition if i was three years ago already beating the drums telling people that the playstation 5 was not worth the investment day one i was already beating that drum when they first announced these imagine now trying to make an argument to somebody and i'm tbh you brought this up too about uh getting gifts try now making that argument now with activision now being under that uh being under xbox like <laughs> you're telling me i don't gotta pay for call of duty every year it might not even happen every year anymore or i don't even have to pay for yearly releases now in that area i'm getting access to a bunch for the of longest games. people have been saying call of duty Jesus. should become a live service even if it doesn't yep. it technically is now because you can now. get it on the game pass for ten dollars a month yep. so like it turns it into it and, but and and think of this right remember how i talked to you about the the money proposition like the make the math make sense right like in order for you to get the value of the game pass how many like for how many like day one games would you have to get on the game pass that you want to play for you to you know make sure it's worth the money right and i think i think we said it was like if you just had because how much is a yearly like uh 120 i forget 120 right so you just need three triple a games that's it three triple game if you play call of duty boom that's one you already got call of duty down two other games easily if they drop if microsoft drops any two big triple a games a year which they already have done if they do that again like another halo another forza or whatever it is and you play those games boom you just paid for your game pass and that's not even including all the additional bonuses that it gives you like being able to play it on your phone being able to play it anywhere you want online you know multiplayer all that sort of stuff if you're a console player like all that gets bundled into a deal that is just in like it's insane there's nothing on the market that even comes close to giving you that amount of value to play that amount of games so yeah you're just shit out of luck sony you just gotta got to take the L and, 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 you know, retreat, figure out where, where, like how, like, I, I don't want to say ignorant, but like how, like you just drop the ball on this completely and figure a way to like come back from it. Yeah. I, I, I it, seeing some of the response from like Sony fans, like how kind of out of touch, this makes me realize how like, I'm getting older. Yeah. Um, because you it's like, cause I was making the argument. I was like, I, I'm got, first of all the games I'm looking forward to the most are actually PlayStation games this year. Let's get something straight. Mm -hmm. For Spoken, yeah. God of War, Horizon, I and I yeah. said, but I was like, if I if this was not my job and I was working a regular nine to five job and I had a family and all that other stuff, um, I would see more value in just and I can only pick one and getting an Xbox with the Game Pass because then my entire family will be able to play all these different games as well as I'm gonna get all these different games. And I'm like, I'm sorry. As much as I love God of War, I don't love it enough to where i i would i would trade in uh the xbox with the game pass uh just for that one game as well as like horizon i was like it's just more it's it's it's, it's like looking at things from like bang from your butt because like i've seen some people saying well you know i don't have a lot of time so like i'm just gonna play god of war i was like well you're only thinking about it from your perspective basically uh, like I, un I understand casual. that perspective but like the average everyday person they're gonna go with yeah. what gives them more for their money uh versus just like those couple of little amazing you know uh, yeah, exclusives that you're gonna get. Yeah. Well, I mean, think of it this way too, right? Like, and this is the thing that I think is very important, right? Uh, those exclusives, even think about last year, right? You got what Ratchet and Clank Returnal, which was 
a very hardcore game. You got Ratchet and Clank, which is casual. And then what was the third one? There was like a third exclusive day I think they came out with that was pretty big. Uh, I can't even remember. I don't remember. Okay, let's just say there was a third one. I just can't remember which one it was. If you think about that, those came out in the first like quarter, two quarters of the last year. And then after that, it was a drought, like a complete drought. And you can't like Sony can't compete because the only console that does that type of thing and gets away with it is Nintendo. Nintendo's literally the only platform where they do that, where they do it, where they just make like one or two exclusives a year, but people are willing to pay for it to play on those things. But I don't think Sony has that same like grip that like Nintendo does, like for their like IP. It's like what you're saying. It's like from a value proposition, it's like on top of this, it's hard to get a PS5 as it is still like you have a better chance of getting an Xbox right Don't now. Don't underestimate that. Yep. That's massive. And a lot of people were talking about, oh, the Series S isn't a real next gen console. It is better than it is a really good value proposition. It's actually a very That's one of the reasons console. why the 360 won that last generation. Because it, it was came, cheap. It came, and it and came it out bad. a year before Sony. Now, obviously, yep. those two came out. PS5 and what's the name came out at the same time this time, but it's hard to get a PS5 compared to the Xbox. Yeah. Uh, and, and I think that's a very good point that you brought up ethos like regardless because nintendo the negative about nintendo is that like you know they've always had a third party problem like and even the third party games that have come out on the switch like they've been crap right like they yeah. they just haven't run as well as the ps4 and the xbox so with this uh with this particular generation though like sony can't even fall back on hey well we'll third just let our stuff. multi plats run us yeah. yeah we'll just let our third party games run us because if you can't even get the console then who's going to be playing on it like people are still going to be playing on the ps4 but they want to play on the ps5 they want to play those ps5 exclusives and they want the better system so that's not even going to work this time so if you can't get the console and you're saying you're going to make more ps4 like that's going to work because that's not what people are asking for they want ps5 they don't want to be at four so so i think that this is really biting them in the butt and yeah like uh and i think the other i think the other exclusive you were thinking about was was mob morales i think that oh. was the other one uh yeah which was ba year? which was basically just a dlc no, that came out it wasn't even did it yeah it was like a it was like a ah launch. you had a time oh, flies it, moment it, like it, i did yeah, yeah, yeah you don't know what year it is yeah so my bad yeah i thought they came it sold a lot though in 2021 no it sold a lot in 2021 because there's nothing to play what else are they gonna buy here's the thing this is this is what me and siggy were arguing because the problem is is that console fanboys and people who are console wars they only look at sales of the console and they don't understand that that's not the game anymore. They think, oh, well, Sony sold, you know, has a way bigger market share than Xbox from a console standpoint. There's only like, let's say, I'm just throwing numbers out. Let's say 70% or 60% of it is owned by Sony with their PlayStation 5 and Xbox getting demolished here. This obviously means that Xbox is still screwed. Like Sony's still whooping them. And it's like, no, you don't understand. Xbox, this is what I said for many years. Xbox isn't looking at the game from a from a hardware standpoint. They're looking at it purely off of Game Pass. Game Pass hit 30, 30 million people have now gotten Game Pass. And it's gonna, with this, it's probably gonna hit 50 million and probably keep getting higher and higher. When we have those months within the year that are like the Februaries, like this year, where it's just game after game after game after game after game, there's no way you're gonna find a regular casual gamer that's gonna know that there's like five major games dropping on, like multi games dropping in one month and being able to put up like 120 160 dollars for all of it when literally they have either they pay 160 dollars to play it all on their playstation or they have it on game pass and like maybe half of those games are already on are going to be coming day one to the game pass it, it, the value there is insane like no one in their right mind unless like you're just being biased you're no one's gonna say oh yeah i'd rather pay the 160 dollars than pay you know oh wow holy crap i only paid 15 dollars this month and i'm playing and i got to play all three of these games day one that's the, that's the whole proposition behind why people don't buy games day one and they'd rather wait till a sales drop happens or a game gets cheaper is because they want to wait and then get the game at a lower price that they feel is more tenable to them. But if you have the game pass, that throws, that's like an a ultra version of saving for a sale. So I don't know. Yeah. It, it just makes a lot of sense. And then the other thing I think is important too is not only the software aspect, it's also... Um, Microsoft understands something that I think is very, very important for the future. And that's simply put, it's that, um, I'm forgetting my train of thought here. The, why am I forgetting what I was just about to say? It was very important. Uh, say something TBH while my brain tries to reload. Well, there's stuff in my face. Um, what are you eating? Chips. Yeah. Tell them what you're eating. What type barbecue, of chips? Barbecue baked chips. 
Um. Anyways, why yeah. you? Why you? No, no I got some. I got some for you. Yeah. Um, well, my, my my brain is I was, loading on what it was. I was gonna say another thing that like I don't. I'm starting to notice on my timeline is the Game Pass is great marketing for Microsoft in a sense that um. So like for those who don't have the Game Pass, there are certain games that always stay on the Game Pass, but then there are other games that rotate, kind of like Netflix, where it'll only yep. be on there for a few months and they swap some new games in there and stuff like that. Whatever deals they cut with the studios. Um, Anytime that they swap new games in, I notice Microsoft like tweets about it and it always gets good press. Like the community, oh shit, this is what we can expect for the next month or two or whatever. And then now that they have acquired Bethesda and Activision, when these games are getting swapped, it's like it's it's constantly creating viral moments and like um, word of mouth, basically. That, that And that's something that Sony does not have. Like you said, there's a long drought in between these games versus Microsoft is constantly pushing out content not just from a gaming standpoint, but from like a marketing standpoint, just from like the business side. I see that helping them in the long run. The more studios that they acquire, eventually it's going to continue to grow from word of mouth uh, because of social media. Uh, but what were you about to say, Jay? Oh, no. So I was going back to uh, to what Ito said. Like, I, I think that literally like the greatest move that Microsoft made with the whole Game Pass situation is putting new games on their day one. Like if they didn't do that, because that's what I was initially expecting them to do with the Game Pass. We were like, oh, well, we see PlayStation now and, you know, people really aren't knowing it. But I remember when it first came out, you know, some people want to play some of the older games, but they never put any new games on there. Like that wasn't the point of it. It was to play, you know, some of the older games since uh, the PS4 didn't have backwards compatibility. But with this particular thing, Microsoft was doing I was like oh okay well if this is going to be the same thing like I don't want to play the old game like that doesn't appeal to me I know that it did appeal to a lot of people and they did get to play some of the games that they you know never got a chance to play but with them saying hey like Halo is coming on their day one Forza is coming on their day one like all these new games that people are actually anticipating I think that that was I think that you know single-handedly uh, for a lot of people like was the reason why game pass got so much value and why like it's it's really good service right now and, and that's why i feel like you know they're winning uh currently in the console war between uh you know sony and microsoft and you know, like i said this this whole you know acquisition thing with all these dev studios is just going to make it infinitely worse for sony to even you know uh gain some ground that they lost this year Okay, I remember my thought now. I remember. Okay, so what I was going to bring up, this is what me and Siggy brought up during the live stream, is that if you look at it, like, we can shit on Call of Duty all we want. The last one was not that good and didn't sell that much, but still, the funny part was, even though we said that that last Call of Duty did not sell a lot, it still hit number one of, like, their top ten sales, like, across the consoles, on, like, on PlayStation. It still hit number one consistently. It, it, it beat out all of them. And then if you look at the top ten beyond, like, uh, with all the platforms... Uh, literally the only PlayStation exclusive this year that got on there was Miles Morales. Now, guess what position it was in. Uh, probably 15. Oh, I, this is 10. Oh, out of my 10. bad. Well, then 10. <laughs> uh, close, but no. So we hit six. So your only exclusive hit sixth place. Obviously, you're going as multi plat so obviously you have a big sale issue. But remember, the reason why this got on, think about it this way. This is why I think this is a misstep. The only reason why Miles Morales got on this list, granted, it came out in 2020, was because of Spider-Man No Way Home. It was because Wait, of- Wait, so Ratchet didn't yeah. get there? Ratchet was not on there. No, it did not it did not hit the top 10. Actually, no, not that, no, not that I think about it, it makes sense. We grew up playing platformers, but I don't feel like they're popular with the new no. kids. Call of Duty is still massive. It's still freaking massive. Like regardless, like it, every year, it still it constantly sells at top number one spot every time. And now Xbox owns all that. And the crazy part is, um, Sony was the biggest customer of Call of Duty. Like it, it, it was like part of the 17 percent of mm -hmm. like all the sales. Microsoft was behind at eleven percent uh, and fourth place, I think. If their proposition, their proposition was, okay, we own this IP or we own this now, and all we have to do is make up that percentage to catch up to Sony. If we, like, I'm just saying, like, in the case of if we wanted this to go exclusive or we wanted to put this in an exclusive box, they could easily hit it. Like, I think they could totally hit it with the Game Pass now. So it's not a problem for them. The only thing um, is uh, they have, like, certain correct. contracts in place. I've seen conflicting correct. reports, like, two to three it's years to it. it goes yeah. up. Yeah. But, like, I, I couldn't find, like, a definitive number of when the contracts are in place with Sony. But whenever they're done, Microsoft can literally do whatever they want with these games. And I think that's the misunderstanding is a lot of people are trying to throw, like, that out and just be like, it's not going to be exclusive on Xbox. And I'm like, me and Siggy said the same thing, right? If I spent, it's the same thing like the Bethesda, which is, what blows my mind is people, like, have, like, short-term memory. Because I feel like this is deja vu when they bought Bethesda 
Everybody was yelling the same thing. They're not gonna put Fallout and Elder Scrolls exclusively on Xbox. It was always a multi plat That would make no sense. Why would they lose money at the table to make it exclusive, right? Like, and okay. They, they literally did it. And then I was like, why would they not do that with Call of Duty 2? It's like, if you told me that I can only play it on Xbox ecosystem, and all my friends who play Call of Duty are only in that ecosystem, and I'm sitting here with a PlayStation, like, no, nah, I'm gonna pick up a Game Pass and play that shit either some way, somehow, or I'm gonna pick up an Xbox Series X or S so I can play with my friends. Like, it, it makes sense. I think people can be like, oh, well, you'll lose out of money with Sony, but I'm like, if I just have to catch the gap that Sony was selling, if I can just catch that gap up, like, close to being, like, the number one seller of Call of Duty, even if Sony, we lose that amount from Sony, it's worth it, because... It, I think a lot of people don't think about this. There is literally like entire divisions of Microsoft that are designated for risk assessment and their job, their literal job is to crunch numbers and be like, okay, in this scenario, in this scenario, how much money could we make? How much money will we lose if we did this and this and this? And they've already crunched the numbers. And in my mind, business-wise, if I was Phil Spencer, if I was Microsoft's like CEO, I'd be like, all right, if we just make this exclusively for us, would it work out? Would we find that lost revenue that we lose from, uh, you know, multi-plat sales? would we make that up by getting people on game pass and if the answer is yes i'm going game pass all the all the way i'm gonna be like yeah screw screw keeping it on playstation let's just put it on the game pass and you know it's open enough on all the systems that it's not like people won't be able to get their hands on call of duty still they're just gonna you know play it on their pc play it on their xbox or play it on their mobile phone i don't so know it I, don't, out. I don't know why people are complaining i think this shit is a good thing because the ball is I now think. in sony's court bitch do something they gotta do better they this is this is why competition is important we complain yeah. oh there's no football games because ea bought fucking uh the, the nfl license and shit like that well now it forces sony to do something like they cannot they they have to do a game y'all clowning, clowning microsoft like the entire xbox one generation y'all was straight up clowning them telling them they didn't have games and stuff they that deserved it, but they did it. They really did it, though. <laughs> yeah, and they did it. Everything that everybody made jokes about them about, T-Bitch was clowning them every single podcast about. Phil took that shit personally, and he was like, all right, bet. And he did exactly what everybody said Microsoft was weak at. Y'all don't got games. You don't got IPs. You don't have, you know, anything that meets up with Sony. Remember, the number one thing last gen was... Microsoft didn't have games. They didn't have games that made them want to go out and buy Xboxes. They didn't have exclusive games that were that good like, compared to Sony's. That's why Sony dunked them and the DRM mishap too. But that's why Sony PS4 just destroyed them. And on top of that, it was a, PS4 was a little bit more powerful. Then you move into the next gen, we have literally a reverse. The Xbox console is more powerful regardless of what people want to tell you. Technically, it is a more powerful machine. The ecosystem is way powerful. The value proposition is way better. The pricing is way more uh um is way more fair for Xbox. And on top of that, it's way more readily available than the than the Sony. People will have a high demand for the Sony console, and I think this is just my take. I think it's serious. This is my hot take. I think the only reason why the PS5 has sold a boatload has honestly just been because of the strength of the PS4. I think because so many people bought the PS4 last gen, they just upgraded to the next version of it, which would be the PS5. And I that's my take. And I think what's gonna happen is, and again, I state this again, it's not gonna, I'm, I don't expect that like Xbox is gonna overtake uh, Sony in like console sales, like with the, you know consoles itself but i do believe is that the xbox game Pass is going to like double time value it's going to like double the amount of customers i believe like in the next like two years three years and on top of that the amount of games that are going to come out are going to be insane and you're going to be sitting there literally probably like that, that meme from spider-man where you're like i've lost everything except for spider-man and you're gonna be sitting there with a spider-man machine like and you'll be like well damn like i can't believe it like there's nothing to play on this. This shit's dusty. Yeah, I, I think it's weird. I don't think you have a hot take. I don't I'm, think you have a hot take, Ethan. I think I have a hot take. I think no, I don't. I, I think that's a perfectly logical thing to say that comments. people bought Check the, the comments, PS5. Be, I, 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 but I think that's perfectly logical, though. Like, you think if you think of it in a very logical standpoint, like, yes, you're going to automatically buy the PS5 because, you know, the strength of the PS4. Like, you automatically just want the upgrade, right? Like, this was a true upgrade. This wasn't like the PS4 versus the PS4 Pro, right? Like, this, yeah, this, is, this was a legit upgrade. Like, you get the SSD, you get faster load times. That alone, you know, you know got people excited even the people that didn't even understand what the ssd was they didn't even know what it was they didn't know about the speeds they didn't care about that but they saw that games were loading in one second and they were like oh yeah like this is it right here like and you get a true 60 frame per second like so i think that, that that's perfectly logical like it's a legit upgrade this time so people you know automatically want it so i don't i don't think that's too much of a hot take i'm uh but before uh before i let you in tba let me let me say uh, i'm gonna give what ito said another way when it comes to 
you know microsoft acquiring bethesda and uh and activision and you know ultimately making what they just bought exclusive why would you buy bethesda and activision and yeah why would you spend all of that bread just to keep these games on your competitor system it literally makes no sense like the point of getting these studios is to ultimately put them on your ecosystem so yeah you aren't going to lose a little bit of money from you know taking these multi plants away from the sony platform and possibly you know nintendo platform but ultimately you're going to gain it plus more because like ethos said the game pass or if you don't even invest in a Game Pass, if you just get an Xbox or if you get a PC to play these same games. Like, I don't understand why this doesn't make sense to some people. I think you're just like, I think the people that it doesn't make sense to, they're just like completely jaded in this situation. I no, think... Sony cannot just go out and buy somebody and call it a day, like, and catch up. It doesn't work that. They're like, me and Siggy literally did the they math. They don't have the, the ecosystem cap. in place or the money. They don't have the ecosystem. They don't have the money on hand to do it. And on top of that, there's no one left on the board that can help even the gap. There's nobody from a money from a. Uh, value niggas gonna buy Ubisoft? No. Nah. Yeah, uh, Ubisoft. We don't want those games. <laughs> EA might help a little bit close the gap, but it won't be enough. Uh, Square. Even people have been talking about Square. Square doesn't do it. The only one that Siggy said, which makes sense, is buying Valve. But I, I just don't. Mm, in any nah, reality I don't see that. that. Mm, yeah, nah. I just don't see Game no, Boy ever doing that. That would yeah, never happen. They're their own damn but platform. That's the only one that they could afford. They could buy, and that could push the needle because then they could like help dominate part of the PC like selling. What stuff that's like this? What I'm starting to see is like I feel like my it's jokes biased. get. I feel like my jokes get lost in translation when. I bullied Microsoft saying they don't have any games. It was coming from a place of love. The Xbox 360 is one of my favorite consoles of all time. That's that right. I wanted I wanted the Xbox one to do well. So we made the joke, Xbox don't get no games until they fucking get right. But what I mean is like you were saying like the bias. When it, when, when those 3 years where we were doing the uh, Nintendo don't got no games, Nintendo yep, sad music, slander. niggas was yep. laughing and shit, bro. But when I started doing it at Xbox, then it became I stopped once they had games. When we started doing the Xbox, then it's like, "Oh, you're like a PlayStation fanboy." I'm like, "Yo, I want all these platforms to do well." And so like yep. if I see something that's not working, then yeah, I'm going to speak up on it. But it's like it's never anything that I want to see something fail. Um so it's interesting to see. I, I think this stuff is good. I think it 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 gets us talking, it gets everybody interested again. It, the the balls in Sony's court, they gotta find something to uh to fight. It's like it, what's the mean? Fight back, nigga, fight back. Fight back. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's what it feels right now. Like, yo, fucking never forget Sony is the same company that when when they put out the uh PS3 for six hundred dollars. They told oh motherfuckers to get two jobs. This, yep. this shit, this shit happens in cycles, and it feels like I'm not Your saying peaks. it's gonna happen, but it feels yep. like it might be time for Microsoft this generation to step up because people to forget during the GameCube, PS2 era, Xbox, PS2 was yep. number one, Sony. Yep. Then came fucking 360, PS3, 360 won that one. Right. Then this next era, Sony came back with the PS4. So like, if we're looking at history, they improve each other. Yeah, yeah, time. they imp yep. it might be Microsoft's time. The, the history repeats. And that's itself. okay. You can accept that. It yeah. doesn't. It's not the end of the world that you know it's not the end of the world if your piece of plastic ends up like you know not giving you what you like or what like a competition does or if people prefer the competition it's not a big deal it's not the end of the world you know play what you want to play play on whatever you want to but there's no reason to just be like i'm gonna just like shit on this or like be like act like this is the worst thing i've ever heard in my entire life like this is just gonna destroy the gaming landscape it's just no reason to like just make that shit up mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. even need to put their feelings to the side and just think logically yeah. about this instead of just your identity their, is their not bias, your piece fan of plastic. Yeah, yeah. your identity is not your piece of plastic please get that through your head some heads. of y'all too old for this shit um that's facts What's the name? Uh, so other stuff, because we got more. The CEO oh. of Activision, Bobby Kotek, which has been okay. involved in a lot of sexual allegations. Um, he will remain CEO for the time being. Um, what's the Ooh. name? Uh, I think until the acquisition is like 100% complete. And then after that, the Bobby will be answering to Microsoft, Phil Spencer in specific. But like, I feel like this is them sunsetting him. He's going to stay in place just so like... You don't you don't want to switch CEOs in the middle of an acquisition. In the middle of a merger. Yeah. yeah, in the middle of a merger. They want to make sure the deal is 100% done, then I feel like they're going to pay him off and just make All him leave basically. Yeah, force him out basically. I think that's what's going to happen. I'm kind of sad that it, you know, he leaves with a golden parachute, but that's capitalism, baby. That's the woes of capitalism. Yeah, but, so yeah. I wouldn't I wouldn't worry too much about this. I think they're going to get him the fuck up out of here cuz There's no way. There's no way. I think like Phil knows this. He's like that would be such a uh, a PR nightmare to like own it, 
Activision and keep Bobby on. Like that would just be a nightmare. I to get good. Like somebody said this on Twitter, and I said they've been brilliant. A viral moment would be like if you got security guards dressed up as like Spartans from Halo and just dragged him out of the office. Like that would have been like from a viral standpoint, that would have been like really crazy, like insane to do something like that to like embarrass him or something. But who knows? Who mm. knows? I won't do that. I don't know. I wouldn't I, I would I wouldn't do that. Like I get where you're going with I that, but I wouldn't do that because then it's being insensitive to a very serious topic. Like we're talking about like sexual uh, assault and allegations, and then you're talking about bringing Master Chief in and dragging this nigga out. I feel like that wouldn't be received I mean, well. No, that's I, extra. That's 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 exaggerated. That's yeah, exaggerated. That's but exaggerated. I, think, I don't think I think that people need to I, I think that like if if everything that he did was true, like one of it's true. He does need to be public humiliated. No, yeah. I don't even think he has to go. He needs to be public, publicly I humiliated. Agree. Like there has to be some sort of consequence. Because, like I said, you know, um, and he's not leaving with a golden parent. Oh, no, 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 no. I agree. There needs to be consequences. Just yeah. a little bit more serious. That's what I'm saying. No, we don't. Yeah. No, this needs to. At that motherfucker, yeah, bro. no, it needs to be public. It needs to be public because people are like the people who truly care about this. The people who he's actually affected. Like yeah. if he just slips out the back door with, with you know however parachute. much money, yeah, however much yeah. million, like that that suck and and. It's, it's even worse because this always happens it's not just you know in this particular situation like there have been so many people who have been in the higher yep. up positions that they do something bad and then they you know they'll away. they'll either resign themselves or you know whoever ends up taking over they'll just be like okay like this person stepped down like you know whatever and then and then they'll just slip out the back door and then they're just living their lives you know and and i think that people need to be publicly punished because it's going to continue to happen until someone gets you know made a made an example out of so yep. i think in this situation in our industry like if this man truly did this and, and you know activision was you know such a terrible company you know in uh in the internals no he needs to he needs to be publicly humiliated like obviously not the spartan thing like that's just crazy i'll but, take it you know it'll be I'll funny take Doomslayer. i'll take doom it'll be funny him and him out. it'll be funny yeah, yeah. no it'll, it, it'll be absolutely hilarious but no it, it needs i to be personally would like, think it needs it would to be, be some funny. consequences i'm i'm looking at it from the standpoint of do you really want to piss off you know blue hair people would look for any reason to be mad that's yeah, what i'm looking I don't at know. i think that shit would be like obviously like if you fixing the problem right like and this is like a show of good faith to like start it off but like humiliating him for like humiliating all of you i think that's a good beginning gesture of faith obviously like that you can't just do that and just be like all right that's it in the culture they would have to hire like some good writers it's got to be real tasteful i think because like yeah, it, it, yeah, that like, could backfire in their face i think obviously yeah but I, i'm gonna be honest with you seeing like bobby kotick getting dragged out of his office i don't think would make anybody upset <laughs> I think it bring everybody immense joy. And just adding like a Spartan, maybe just tie like his little, legs like, to a warthog. Maybe a little, <laughs> maybe, yeah. Maybe a little, you know, Halo melee on the back of there to kick him out of the office. You know, I don't think anyone's going to be mad about that. The only person going to be mad about that is Bobby, Bobby Kotick. That's the only person who will be really mad about that. Shit. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, just to get all the Microsoft uh, characters, yeah. you know, you, you get, can them get them all to beat his ass. Yeah. Get, yeah, get, yeah, get Master Chief. And then, yeah, just walk, them, like, just walk them out the office or something. Like, yeah, it's like I, the I meme that, where you watch them. Out. Yeah, it's like when you see the, you know, the gang meme where they're beating the shit out of the initiation. It's like, fight back, and they, like that. Like, they did that to him. That shit would be funny as fuck. I, I would definitely laugh at that shit. I'd be like, yeah, motherfucker deserves that shit. Some people, I agree with JG. Some people need to get humiliated like that. And to, because granted like it, he's not gonna walk away with this without making a shitload of money that more than that more than we'll all probably make in our lifetime which is insane mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so the least we can do the least we can do is humiliate him for while he gets it at least and Especially not just walk this, away this the other darkness. news that apparently he was trying to buy kotaku and a pc yeah. gamer Bro, yeah, trying yeah. to silence when the I press. Saw that, <laughs> yep. When I saw that, I said, "Oh no, he pulling uh -huh. the Jeff Bezos." I said, "Oh Jeff shit!" Bezos, yep. I said, "Oh shit!" But and, and this again, like, kind of, kind of goes back to the point that we were trying to make. Like, if you really were trying to buy Kotaku, because you know, and and like I mentioned before in previous podcasts, when we saw that Kotaku article, I think the Kotaku article was the one that sent them over the edge because they not only you know brought up situation about him, but they talked about the entire board. And like I said, it got really serious because they said that some of these people that were at the board on Activision were a part of Je uh, Jeffrey Epstein's uh, little red uh -huh. book. So like I said, no, nah, that stuff is crazy. Like it gets it gets worse than uh, than just you know a couple of sexual harassment cases. And, and just think about the people that were actually affected by this. And, and that's what I really care about in this situation. Think about the people that are actually right. affected. Like if because Microsoft essentially just saved him. Really, like they yeah. just saved him. It doesn't matter how you know how much that the board of directors of Activision you know were defending him and were like yeah you know we're just going to stand behind uh, behind him and whatnot. Think about the people. 
people we actually affected at the at the bottom like the actual workers who were you know at the at the ground level who have to deal with this stuff every day and didn't want to talk about it until you know it became too much and more people were affected so that, those are people that i really care about and if you're just going to slip out the back door microsoft essentially just saved him uh you know from getting any type of consequences any type of punishment then that's messed up i don't like that yep that's facts get him the fuck out of here i'm happy they got him the fuck out of here because i'll be honest with you um microsoft from a at least from a, a culture standpoint is way better um not only do i think like obviously like the sexual harassment shit is is terrible and it, it's definitely like way higher priority than anything else i think that like toxic culture in the workplace that's terrible too but on top of that like this is not me saying like trying to like act like oh this is the same level but i'm just saying like the way they have creatively killed like uh franchises people's creativity the devs that work on these games that have like come up with these unique cool type of games and they turn them into call of duty um you know win cycles to just go in there just make another call of duty bro just win wind up another call of duty instead of letting them like experiment and create new ip and stuff like that like that shit too like bro like i'm just happy that microsoft at least has shown multiple times that they're not a studio that is uh uh that is not like hey we need you to turn this thing out every single year worse you that's like hey if you want to work on something creative go for it and they've it's, shown that multiple times it's no way they're not going to get him the fuck out of here because phil spencer they also did to. a podcast recently he didn't like him well yeah, no no like well he said that um the xbox platform is not a platform for politics it's not a place for like free speech and shit like that he wants uh -huh. to keep it like gaming and if that's really the case that says to me like he's hinting we yeah. don't even want that drama on our platform. So like, they're yeah. just going to let the merger happen, then give them the boot, I think. Yeah, kick them out. I agree. If yeah, they don't like do that, that's, that's PR suicide if they don't. It's really yeah, good. exactly. Yeah, Microsoft doesn't want that bad press like you all mentioned before. So like this, and, and that's why a lot of people were like questioning this. They're like, do you really want that that headache after everything that's that you know was going on and yeah. is still going on for the people that won't let it die? Like, is this something that you truly want? But you know, at the end of the day, it's about the IPs, and you know, and they spent the bread to get these IPs, so they're going to you know essentially, uh, hopefully, because uh, a lot of people are still you know kind of worried about it, and, and it kind of goes back to what we saying about bobby Kotek, but like people still worried about like are they truly going to change the culture around since you all uh acquired them because microsoft doesn't have this you know bad press like i'm sure that there probably has been something that's happened um but you know it, it hasn't been on the level of activision blizzard so until we hear something about it like microsoft still uh for the most part has a good you know track record when it comes to how they treat their employees so like I said, they're yeah, they're, they're gonna get him up out of here. I just I just don't want to see him just slip out and just yeah. nothing you know had been said about the situation once the acquisition is actually complete. And, and for those worried, because there were some rumblings online, they were worried that Microsoft's end goal is to make the Game Pass end all be all. Um, Phil Spencer is also on record saying that Game Pass will not replace ownership of games. It, they're just trying to give consumers options, so you will always have the option to buy physical copies as well as Game yeah. Pass. I just want to say how I remember how like almost a decade ago, people told me and told everybody else that digital games weren't going to be anything that, you know, that, that, that uh, you know, that wasn't going to, no one was going to adapt to that. Gamers only want physical stuff. And now look, <laughs> digital has overtaken like <laughs> physical game sales. Like it's crazy. So. Yeah. I, I think we're reaching a point where like people are more comfortable with digital. When the Xbox one first came out, we still weren't there. I don't think. No one wasn't ready for the DRM shit. Now look, both consoles <clears throat> do that shit. Yeah. It took, it took a little bit. It, it took yep. some time just takes time just takes time yes sir sheesh that was a long that conversation all the about microsoft oh. yeah that was all the that was all the xbox activision news oh. now we can just run through the rest of this news real quick before we wrap this one up um another acquisition that got buried in the mud because of the microsoft thing was take two interactive uh they purchased zynga for those unaware take two they own 2k games as well as um rockstar um, they purchased the mobile game aficionados Zynga, home to games like Farmville on Facebook. Uh, what do you guys think this means for the uh, for the, the the greater greater good of the gaming industry? Mobile games, baby. <sighs> More mobile games. You think we'll get like a farming simulator inside of uh, the next GTA Six or something? Yeah, we might get a GTA Six on mobile. <laughs> Yeah, I remember like I hey, this, maybe. The, the day this got announced, like the very next day, the Microsoft stuff happened, and then like everybody forgot. <laughs> yeah, this this got buried, and still a lot of people, at least in the U.S., like we don't play mobile games like that, but we know all across the the rest of the world, like mobile gaming is hot, and it's only getting bigger. 
So this is uh, still something major, you know. Obviously, to the to the masses, the uh, the Microsoft Activision news is is higher. But this is uh, I mean, this is still big. Like they uh, they spent twelve billion for Zynga, so that's still again not a pretty penny. <laughs> uh, so this is it's very interesting that Take Two, you know, they they got a lot of bread too because. I'll be buying all the freaking shark cards at GTA, so they had no money to get Zynga. Uh, so we're gonna see what ends up happening with this. But like I said, the mobile market is is pretty big, so we'll see what ends up happening with Dude. with this one. Here, let me put my tinfoil hat on here, and just I'm not saying this is true. Just you know, put some speculation out there, make some bullshit up for the sake of conversation. <laughs> what if the new trend is companies want to be bought by Daddy Microsoft or like Sony? They want to cash out. So what Take Two is doing on the low is they're acquiring smaller studios to position themselves to be better to be acquired by Microsoft. Because now not only do they own Zinc, they they own um. Um, was it they own NBA 2K, fucking all the Rockstar games. They own like Mafia. They own a lot of really good games. And then you throw Zynga in there with the mobile market, so you get the entire Facebook market or whatever. And they might take it to Microsoft and be like, "Hey, you want to? You want another Infinity Stone?" Like, <laughs> yo, imagine if that shit came to Game Pass, that'd bro. That'd be messed up. That'd be messed up. That oh, shit man. be fucking crazy. I mean, that's a crazy weave, but you know what? I'm, I'm not gonna say that you that you are off with that. Like, if they if they truly are playing, you know, the the long game with increase this, their value, they're trying to just increase their value. Yeah, they're trying to like, man. Like, <laughs> I know like, you hey, man. Like, hey, Microsoft, look at us over here. Look what we got. Yo, he trying to buy us. I know, like, dead, yeah, I know dead ass though. They increase the value that Microsoft buys. Niggas would lose their shit if NBA 2K became an Xbox exclusive as well as fucking uh, Grand Theft Auto, bro. Motherfuckers would lose their shit. Yeah, that, I think that will be crazy because, you know, like, you know, the, the, the brothers, the, the people of color, you know, we the ones that, that majority play 2K. So, yeah, they going to be wilding out, bro. Well, I'm just going like to be a mob. <laughs> yeah, they do not like playing 2K or Xbox for some reason. I don't know why, but like, this, you know, a lot of people like playing on PlayStation. So, yeah, that'll be funny. Yes, sir. Um, Other piece of news. Uh, a new Battle Royale game is joining the arena. My Hero Academia Ultra Rumble. It's being published by Bandai Namco. It will be a free-to-play battle royale game starring Deku in the gang from UA High. It'll be available on Switch, PS4, Xbox One, and PC. Uh, they're currently going to be doing a closed beta test pretty soon. Did you guys get a chance to take a look at this trailer? Yeah, I did. To me, it looks kind of like, um, what's that shit? Uh, the new game from Epic, the the wrestling BR game. Rumbleverse. Yeah, I'm like, why would I want to play this over that? Especially because this is only 24 man, and then it's coming to PS4 and Xbox One. So you already know it's running on an old ass engine. Uh, yeah. This looks exactly like the same anime fighter. This looks like the My Hero anime fighter that they brought out just with the BR element. Like, I don't see anything unique or special about this. So I was like, bro, like, I don't know how I feel about this. Like, why are, are you trying to go into the BR space? Like, this is like the Dragon Ball uh, Z game that they were, uh, I don't even know if it came out yet, but the one where they were trying to, it, it looked like a BR game too. Like, I don't, I don't understand what Bandai is doing here. I just think they just ran out of ideas and they're just trying to recycle, you know, the, uh, the anime franchises that they do have until, you know, they end up losing license or whatever whenever the contract expires so this is what they're doing here i don't i don't uh, see this you know gaining any same it's gonna come and go let me put my tinfoil hat on for this one as well uh what if bandai namco is pissed that scarlet nexus is not doing well it's not getting a lot of press i mean the people who played it seem to love it but it's not getting the press and the sales that it needs um and they're looking at it like well we tried we tried to make an original game with an original story original art voice acting and you motherfuckers didn't buy it so you know what we're gonna reuse those naruto ultimate ninja storm assets again baby to make a fucking my hero br because they're saying you're not supporting the one game that wasn't a six out of ten that they made how does that make you feel ethos this this thing looks like a whole lot of mid bro i'm not interested in this at all man not at all as soon I as like i saw the... ps4 xbox one i'm like nah yeah no nah, this this is definitely one of those things where we're like uh let's target the you know the audiences that like the popular genres and then slap like anime uh you know like an anime uh skin on top of it so that you know it'll grab the the, the you know the weebs they'll they'll want to play it because you know it has like you know deku and shit so Nah, this is a no good for me. Like, I'd rather have like quality anime projects, like the stuff that like Arc Systems does, like with Dragon Ball Z Fighters, like stuff like that. Like, I'd rather have devs. Like, you know what blows my mind is that we've gone like 
I've had anime games out for so long, and like the only the farthest people think about it is like we have to make our game like Naruto Storm, or we have to make our game like you know, uh, like those open world like fighter type games. Like the, the, those are the only two like uh, arena fighting games. Like, that's the only like two genres that fit with anime, and they they have like not tried to like mix it up and try like completely different things. Like why have we not gotten any like single player RPG style games worth anime? Like, why have we not gotten any of those? Why have we not gotten like a a straight up like a like, DMC like action like anime game like why have we, we not did with anime? naruto broken bonds i think that was called on the game yeah too. yeah like that, that was a long time really ago unique. that was damn near right. 20 those years are, ago like, <laughs> those are pretty unique right yeah They're pretty different and and that's see that's the thing is like one series i mean i argue are, that's what scarlet nexus is yeah like one anime series i think did this very well was Yu Gi Oh. like if you remember the Yu Gi Oh games back on the ps2 era and shit the cool thing about that entire franchise was a bunch like all the developers that made Yu Gi Oh games the i don't know if it was like a tenant of what konami wanted but they made sure that every game did not play like the other games like every time you bought a new Yu Gi Oh game on ps2 it actually or like even on the game boy color each of them actually had different mechanics and different like things that none of them felt the exact same this of course changed later on they just started making the same type of game but like you had like one that was like a chess game another one was a dice game the other one was like a, a straight up like rpg type game uh another one used like uh capsule monsters like there was a bunch of cool different unique ideas like the developers did a twist with the formula they didn't just keep it and i feel like anime games have now like they've regressed to the point where now it's just like we have to copy naruto ninja storm if we don't copy that our game won't be good and like you just get like mid shit like the Demon Slayer game like and I'm just so tired of those type of games existing. Hey, also, yeah. how are you gonna balance this shit? Like looking at the trailer, it looks like you have to pick one of the characters from the show, balanced. and it's, it's gonna, gonna be gonna top be tier characters like Deku, Baku, All Might, fucking. Uh, what was the last time you played an anime game that was balanced? Yeah, I was saying like, how are you gonna bat? Who the fuck's yeah. gonna play the the boy that, that throws little great balls and shit? Like, uh, uh, nobody wants to play him. <laughs> <laughs> like, same thing. Little yeah, pervert. I'm gonna I'm say it, bro. I'm gonna say it, and you know, some people might not like it because you know, it, because it's the only company that has you know the major anime titles. But I think that Bandai Namco, I think they lost it, bro. I think they need to ultimately just lose all of the licenses that they have. Lost they it, nigga. When they have hero. it. <laughs> for a moment they had it for a moment because it was the oh, only thing man. bro like Ben and Namco bro they, they're still at Storm, I'm looking at the they comments had it with Storm, right with Storm. they, it had, it they the haven't made a now. good anime game since Storm yeah Storm but they still don't care. Like the hardcore yeah. anime people, you know they're still playing old games. Yeah, they're right. gonna play them regardless. No. It doesn't, they can yeah. throw them sh like literally shit. So it's the like, anime community's fault. But no, oh, 100%. Ben, yeah, yeah. 100%. yeah. But Bandai yeah, Namco yeah. needs to lose it. They need to lose My Hero. They need to lose Dragon Ball Z. They need to lose every single that major shit anime that they have, bro. Yeah, like given Sonic, yeah, I could give I, another I other, shot. Yeah, like like what you mentioned, uh, Ethos. Like Art System did a fucking amazing job with Dragon Ball Z. Amazing yeah. job. So I, I think that we need to give, you know, we need to give some of these other companies, some of these anime franchises, and I think that they can do like a much better job and like make it something that's truly Life unique instead of just a copy and paste. Oh, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna add a BR mode to, you know, to a, a Naruto style, uh, you know, fighting game, but it's my hero. Like it, it, this is nothing unique here. So the anime people are going to play it. Like I may try it out, but when I looked at, it, am I excited? Hell no. Let Arc Systems make a Bleach fighting game, please. Thank you. That's my public. I'd, I'd rather have a Naruto one, but um, no, fuck that shit. You got enough Naruto games. It's Bleach is time. Yeah, yeah, we need Bleach is back, else. baby. Wow, this man Bleach gets one back. trailer and loses his damn mind. You don't understand. You don't understand. <laughs> a decade. We waited a decade. We, we don't. You don't understand. A decade. A decade. <laughs> we waited so long for that shit. You have no clue, bro. We all cried when we saw that trailer, y'all. But we not. We not gonna just slide past what JG basically said to sum up what everything JG just basically said was. Uh, Bandai Namco is not capable of making good games. Is, is that right? They made Scarlet. Hey, Nets. basically well, at this point, it, it's but... yeah. Basically, yeah. Don't point, give me credit. They're making the same stuff. <laughs> didn't they? <laughs> did, wait, wait. Didn't they make Tales of Arise? That was who good. Made, who made that? Let's look that up. Bandai. I thought Bandai published that, didn't they? Bandai? Publishing and making are two different things. Tales of Arise. Well, Bandai doesn't make games. I thought they were just a publisher, right? They, don't they make, make tech. Okay, I so think. they don't publish. So they don't publish. Oh no, because Bandai. No, Bandai developed it. No, Bandai developed it. All right, we'll give them Tales of Arise. They have. Oh, they did. Franchises outside outside of the anime universe. I'm talking about the anime games. Okay, okay. I'm looking right now. All right, let's rephrase that. JG said Bandai Namco is not capable of making a good anime game. Because I because hold up because you know Elden Ring is, is is being published by them so we're not gonna talk about that like they, they no, still, no they're not they're not developing yeah they're, they're not, not developing, developing that don't give them that credit they're, <laughs> publish, they're publishing it though they're publishing okay it okay to be now. fair to them I to know. be fair to them to be fair they did develop Tekken Seven I did not know that they they developed Tekken yeah I said Tekken so yeah. it, it applies to what he said yeah, we're talking about anime we're talking about anime game yeah they actually developed it yes they developed Scarlet Nexus Tekken is an anime so Tekken's anime. 
the the recent one is definitely. It's a game, bro. It's a game. It is on a physical anime, bro. It's a fucking game. Cut it out. Recently, no, no, no. Recently, it's very anime, bro. Come on, dog. What character do you play in Tekken? Tekken guy. You you have you have uh oh who do I play? You know I play Lucky Chloe. What you talking about? Oh, all right. Next topic. You got. You forgot I beat. You forgot I beat Nomad with Lucky Chloe. Oh yeah, you did beat him with that little cat. You forgot. You forgot because he was mad. He lost that little cat girl. Yeah, he was hella upset. Meow 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 meow. I was doing the the kicks and everything. He was so mad. Oh shit. Um, new New Horizon Forbidden West trailer drop. New story driven one. I don't really don't have much to say other than like it looks really nice and I just want to play it at this point. I actually don't care. Really? Why? I'm not hyped for Horizon because I never could get into the last one. I just, I kept falling asleep trying to play it. I just couldn't get into it, unfortunately. Damn. Yeah. I I'll do feel like it. the story oh, picks up more but... in the second half when you start to learn more about humanity. But I can understand, like in the first half, it's kind of like, why am I doing any of this? Yeah. Did you beat? Did you beat it, JG? Yeah. Yeah. I beat okay. It so I can say it. Yep. All right, for people listening, I'm going to spoil a part like halfway through Horizon. Just heads up, if you haven't played this damn five year old game. I got to the point where you go up a tower and there's a black dude on a, a hologram or whatever it is, and he explains that like they start to like explain like how the monsters came to be the robots that they were like used for human reasons, and then they turned against them or some shit. That's where I got to. I got to that point, and then I stopped playing. I don't know why, and I haven't been able to get back into it. Mind you, I bought this game on PC too. I I bought the game twice because I thought I was gonna be able to get back into it, and I I've tried on PC, and I I can't let myself go through it. I don't know why. Ladies and it's gentlemen, it's always interesting. So <laughs> it's, always, it's always interesting, like how you like when you're into something, like you'll beat it like super oh, yeah, quick. Oh no, no, it's just like those yeah. random games that you're like, I just quit playing. I, like, I just wow, have right. random games. I just like I just can't get into. But the ones I love, like yeah, I can like no life them really fast and beat them you know mm. this is just one of those i don't think i can but the, i will say that does not mean i'm saying the game is bad i do think i agree with tbh i think the game does look beautiful and it does look like a good game just not for me yeah nobody nobody, nobody thinks you think the game is bad uh, uh, you'd be surprised <laughs> no what we what we got in that he statement is you don't beat your games that's i gotta clarify you don't beat your games that's what i got hold on fucking fraud this nigga bought this nigga quit a game twice i didn't hurt at all i thought we said did you realize what you just said i thought we settled this i thought we settled this i never heard that before that might be a gi first this nigga quit a game twice what a fucking fraud let me see At your trophy. At least trophies. I tried the game twice. <laughs> How many games have you not oh. beat? I beat that JG, game. What are you talking about? JG, JG, get the list out, bro. Because I think we got to get I'm the I'm game. committed to the How bullshit. How many games he didn't beat? He didn't I'm beat committed to the year. bullshit. I'm pretty sure uh, I played more games than y'all yeah, last year. What are you talking about? No, I'm pretty he sure probably, he, he probably did. I have the Xbox like, game pass. He, he made There's it no last way. year. Well, <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so nobody here. You play Xbox. Peggle Three, nigga. No Get out of here. There's no way. Bragging about playing Peggle. Probably did play a lot more games. I played a lot more. I'm pretty sure. Peggle in 12 minutes. Control. I don't want to hear. <laughs> but not now. Remember, I played Scarlet before you. <laughs> This is true, but now Ethos, you know, now he's getting paid. Yeah, now, it's now he's getting paid. Yeah. 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 Now he yeah, yeah, now he gotta beat him. Yeah, now he gotta beat him. No, 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 he don't Money beat him. Money is Remember the motivation. Score? Someone writes his script. Oh, he, he, doesn't somebody else beat him. he doesn't play his game. Yeah, yeah, he, 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 he has a script writer that writes the whole entire script for him. He doesn't yeah, even play his game. My corporate overlords at Comcast, they form the opinions for me. This boy ATBH, he just loads up his stream, he looks at news articles, he gives it two cents, and then that's it. And then he hops off and plays some apex that's all he does <laughs> yeah, so he played because less games yeah he plays less oh, games shit. now you know the funny thing is now that we got like the g4 audience looking at my channel somebody's probably gonna shit. clip that part and believe yeah. it yeah. <laughs> see they're gonna go on the reddit see i knew that hokage game was a fraud blacks only play 2k and call of duty uh let's see what else i got I'm here good. Oh, Jedi Fallen Order is rumored that a sequel will be announced yes. this year. I hope so. I hope that shit was great. Um, expect so. to hear in this article from GameSpot, they said expect to hear about the game in a significant way before E3. Uh, the reporter added there's a chance the game is released in 2022, what, but most likely year? will arrive in 2023. Yeah, there's Yo, a chance. That would be crazy. So announced, announced this, this year, but I'm genuinely, holiday? I'm genuinely curious what the fuck they're going to do with this game. It was, really, it was really good, Yoda. but like uh another spoiler so at the end it, it it alluded to a sequel but i'm like yo the jedi all die we all know they're so is he gonna die like where, where, where's still this on going the board. yoda's still on the board you could li if, if yoda shows up as a cameo remember obi-wan is still alive i think obi-wan's still alive uh, 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 ahsoka uh, yoda's alive. alive ahsoka's still alive uh maul is technically still alive like 
they might surprise boss fight against Maul. Like, it's, if they can insert him because he's in the perfect time zone, they can insert him in and still, like, see these, like, iconic characters that we just did not see at all in uh, the first game, which is really cool. Because I know, because people lost their minds when they saw Vader at the end. They were like, yo, this is crazy. And Vader knows you exist. So he's probably going to be hunting you now for, like, the part two of the game. So I think that's going to be really cool. Ooh. We need our Vader boss fight. What if, what if they bring Starkiller back and Starkiller is hunting gonna know. you? They're not going to know. Let him die. <laughs> I killer, swear, bro. every I podcast. Starkiller Star squad. I swear, the most delusional fans are Starkiller fans. I swear. I've never met a more delusional fan base like are convinced that, like, Disney has hidden him and he's going to come back. That man was the most broken lore. Like, granted, he was an amazing character, but he was the most broken, like, Jedi Sith in the history of Star Wars that, that like his power scaling made no sense whatsoever they had sounds like another game you didn't beat you fucking hater I beat both oh. of them what are you talking about not I possible because the second one sucks <laughs> I, I actually beat it did you beat it <laughs> I don't think you beat it did you beat the second one no I turned that shit off and it fucking sucks yeah oh another game you didn't oh. beat that, add that to the list JG yeah, oh, that's the another list. one damn that, that one came yeah. out a long time ago too. yeah keep, keep, keep hyping this man up JG we know you don't play no games be quiet <laughs> Well, I have a reason. Yakuza okay. 1, yeah. Yakuza 2, Yakuza 3, we know. He's wrong. I'm a child, okay? Okay. Also, That's my oh, issue. let me also. Judgment. Let me, let me, let me also defend JG. I'm playing that judgment. That shit is gas. He was I right. told you. I never said it was trash, though. Hold up. What did I say that game was trash? <laughs> you no, need to just, play it. I'm play giving it. him his I said I, I said I would probably play it because I enjoyed Lost Paradise. Um, What's the name? The game with Kinshara. I keep forgetting the damn name of the damn yeah, game. Yeah, we Ooh. told you that this game is English yeah. dub, so. Yeah, it got English dub. I've been playing the English what dub. That, that shit cost? Is it's, it's, made by, it's made by the same company that made Yakuza and Judgment. Oh, Fist of the yes. North Star, Lost Paradise. That was a really good game. Yeah, this game, I'm a... RPG Studio. I'm on chapter seven, JG, of Judgment. I'm um I took a little break, but like no, I've been enjoying it. The story's heat, the gameplay's good. Yeah. yeah. Wait till you get to Law Judgment. I'm telling yeah. you, bro. Yeah. Everybody tells the second one's heat. So yeah. Yeah. I I, I yeah. was trying to wrap my brain around <laughs> what uh what I want to see from yeah. Fallen Order too, though. Like in terms of gameplay, and I kind of just I guess it's just I'm playing it for the story. Like what can they yeah, do gameplay the wise? Um, add more enemies. Uh, yeah. Add more enemy types, probably. Um, Maybe I don't know more customization to the lightsaber. Oh, more powers, know. more more uh, force powers. That's that possible, is. and like they, they can actually implement that into the story. Because the only way that's gonna happen is if he trains with other people. They like, like yeah. maybe he does find Yoda or Ahsoka or somebody. Yeah, mm. it'd be kind of cool if they did drop in, drop out co-op and PvP. That would be mm. called Battlefront. No, that would be called Dark Souls. Which is currently being I was just about to say, yeah, I was like, it's more dark. <laughs> <laughs> that, that case. Next topic. Right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Mobile Anyways, games. Uh, I hope it's true. I hope it's true. Mobile yeah. games. Uh, JG is an Android user. He likes to enjoy that poverty. Uh, you'll be able to play your Android games on PC. How are we feeling Aren't about this? Aren't you sponsored by Samsung? Nope. What? Huh? <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, we, oh, we just got. This is not. This is this is not the Twitch stream. So no, I'm not uh, actually. Uh, uh, <laughs> oh, 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 depends on the location. <laughs> actually, yes. Actually, actually, yes. And and, and and just for yeah, clarification, yeah. Ethos, I am not sponsored by Samsung. I'm sponsored uh -huh. by Samsung Mobile on Twitch. Uh, okay. Oh, oh, not so Samsung as a whole. Yeah. Oh, what mobile phone do you use right now? Uh, I use the Galaxy S5 when I play my mobile games. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'm sponsored Man, by. S5, oh my S5. lord. S5. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, anyways. Uh, what was I about to say? Uh, I mean, this does nothing for me, but hey. But uh, no, no, look, 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 it's pretty cool. Did you look at the trailer? They're adding, like, a, you can, because before you yeah. had used, like, blue stacks, like an emulator or something. Uh -huh. But for those unaware, now they're adding an actual launcher, like Steam or Origin, where basically you'll be able to log into your Google uh, Android account. And you'll be able to download the games to your PC and play them with a controller and mouse and keyboard and cheat like uh, Ethos so likes to do. So I can play Call of, Duty, <laughs> Call of Duty Mobile, baby. This may not matter to y'all, but I think low-key this is kind of a big deal for people who are into mobile games, especially no, content creators. It makes it easier to record. Also, now yeah. you're going to have access to a ton of free games or like cheap games that are playable on your PC. I, th I think it's pretty cool. All the League of Legends yeah, players are going to go play Wild Rift. There are a lot of really yeah, good games good. on mobile that would just be better if it had controller support. And yeah, if they fact. implement that, I think we could it could open up a new uh, like sector of gaming for people. That's fact. Yeah, you're right. For me, I don't care. But I, I think in the overall spectrum, I think this is cool. Yeah, yeah when, if you don't um, have to use the emulator to play them, then yeah, it's cool. The, the dude who works who does sound for me at G4, he put me onto a game the other day. 
uh, called Infinity Ops. I don't know if y'all heard of that. It's literally Titanfall for for iOS huh? and Android. Oh, it, it's kind of it's kind of lit. Yo, check it out. It's got like four point seven yo, stars you on the store. Stand, you know, no, no, dead ass. Look up Infinity Ops on the store. It's dead ass Titanfall. Like I was like, I'm holy shit. Right wall running. You get after like a certain number of kills, you, you get, get a like titan? a Titan and shit. Yeah, Ooh. I was I was thoroughly impressed. He was like, yeah. He's like he's like you play mobile games like. I was like, I do, but I was like, I never heard of this game. This game kind of cool. You should have been told me about this, bro. Yeah, look up. Uh, let me look, look this, this up. Yeah, let me download it. What did you say it was called? Infinity, Infinity Ops. It's free to play. 4.7 stars on iOS. Da, 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 da. And then, so yeah, hey, look up for that. Okay, let's see. Is it like single player or multiplayer? It's a multiplayer game. Online multiplayer shooter. Oh, shit. Where's the Titans at? I'm looking at but, uh, Oh, shit, there are Titans. Told you. Right, yo, let me download this shit. Hey, yeah, give it yo. a try. It's actually not bad. Okay, better. I was like, yo, I was like, I need to get back in my mobile bag, bro. That's a whole market left open, and there's some big bags out there on the mobile market for those who want to be content creators. That's the easiest way to make money. They got fat ass budgets, and I need some of it. Um, <laughs> yeah, let me know. Let me know in the comment section. Y'all want to see some mobile reviews and bring that shit back. Um, but anyways, uh, last but not least, on the on the on the fucking show notes on netflix there's a cuphead show coming more wins for microsoft um did you guys get a chance to check out the cuphead show trailer i don't care about cuphead yeah i don't either i'll just all right let's get this topic hey well let me get a joke off what? real quick do you think okay, uh ahead. do you think this show will be hard to watch oh because the game was so <laughs> oh my god <laughs> you know I'm my mad. body I'm mad. my brain actually took a second to understand the joke you oh my know god. my body <laughs> <laughs> all right well whatever that's all i got on my show notes then do y'all have anything else you want to add to the conversation uh you want to use your own platform to talk about uh your situation after the frost thing or no uh <laughs> i mean i talked about it on stream i them, them weirdos they they it kind of stopped they were kind of coming in my comments coming after me calling me the house nigga g4 and all this other shit oh, uh yeah I, I personally don't care uh um, i mean i don't really have any hot take on it like First of all, anybody who knows me personally knows that I am not a fucking social justice warrior. I'm usually kind of in the center when it comes to things. But what she was saying when she went on that rant, unfortunately, this is why I try to speak as calmly as possible. When you yell, a lot of times people... People don't hear you. Yeah, they don't hear you. They only hear yeah. the emotion. But it, like, if you actually remove the emotion and listen to what she said, I've personally seen what she's talking about because we talked about it multiple times off camera where fucking... Um, it's like they don't care what she has to say. They say she's unqualified because she's not as attractive as, you know, Olivia Munn or or Morgan Webb. And that's all she was talking the, about. She was like, that shit is corny. I don't understand the obsession about like misinformation. Like these motherfuckers are acting like if some like if she accidentally like misspoke about something or just made a mistake about something, which we've all done on this podcast, mind you. I've done it before. I've mistaken something. People in the comments come after me for it. But it's like I don't know. They just act like it's like like politics. Like if someone had given you misinformation about politics or something like that, like that's like a higher like grade of that. But it's like I just don't get it. It's like I'm now going to like harass you and like uh and like uh say you're a terrible person. You're proving her point. You said that's like, yeah, like that doesn't make sense to me at all. I don't. And I don't I, I can understand attitude. their perspective if only like one or two people said it in the comments. But like I don't yeah. really read too much of my own personal comments. I do read them on the G4 to see what people are saying. And like yeah. I, I see it on a regular basis, like enough to where like it's very noticeable. And like so, I understood why she felt some type of way. Because to be yeah. honest, like in defense of like Frost, like she's fucking amazing at doing um interviews. I was like, yo, I was like, you gotta give me some pointers. Uh, like mm -hmm. and people saying like she's unqualified just because they don't want to fuck her. I'm yeah, like, no, that's, that's, that's just that's weird. crazy. That is that is insane. That's kind of yeah, that's big yikes. And been going around that. harassing people online. You're only further proving her point. But I just I didn't I didn't really care what they had to say because the thing is if you. If you answer back to those people, if you if you if you roll around in the mud, it doesn't matter if you win the fight. Both of you are gonna get mud on each other. So yeah, it's like it's yeah. weird though because I've I've also seen that like you know you see a high girl on Twitch or something, and you're like, yeah. well, I, she doesn't, you know, she just can't know anything about video games, right? Like she right. can't be good at video games. Damn, 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 damn if you do, damn yep. if you don't. Yeah. Yeah. It's almost like they're incels. If you're hot, yeah, so I, if you're yeah, hot, exactly. then yeah, you're you're you you don't know how to play games. You're not hot or, or whatever. You're not fuckable with me. Then oh yeah, you don't know how to play games either like what yeah, the so hell I don't get that. so, e so yeah. either way it's men are gatekeeping video games <laughs> once again we're in 2022 oh i don't God. understand why this I, is i don't i don't, I don't yeah i don't agree a lot with like the social warriors be saying but even yeah, a broken clock crazy, is right bro. twice a day yeah, and like some of y'all got a dead ass chill bro yeah hey jg bro maybe you gotta ask your boy the owl maybe he can give you some insight <laughs>
This guy. <laughs> I wonder where he is, man. I wonder where the hell. Now, I'll tell you, I'll tell you this much. Dog. This whole situation made me appreciate my audience more in a sense that like when like you said there's been plenty of times where like maybe we misquoted something like an article in a podcast or like we're on stream and like somebody like when people disagree with us usually sometimes it can get disrespectful but for the most part people be like oh that's not true x y and z and like there's been times where y'all corrected me on the podcast and i'd be like oh my bad but like the conversation stays respectful for the most part over here being on that now that i've crossed over kind of like that white side of things it's a crazy. little bit more mainstream. Them niggas is crazy, bro. Like I'm yeah. like, yo, like some of this. I'm like, yo, you called me the G4 house nigga because you didn't agree with what I, that. Well, what Xbox was doing. G4. Yeah, yeah. Like, whoa, <laughs> like, okay. And that's why I don't get mad at it. I don't take it. I'm like, yo, you oh, people are like sick in the head. Like mentally you, ill. Yeah, yeah. You're, it's a mental cool. ill shit. I'm like, and then on top of that, you niggas wouldn't say that shit in my face, bro. We outside. Y'all niggas on the keyboard all day. <laughs> no, they're bro. intimidated, bro, because you be flexing too much. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah right. <laughs> <laughs> It is. No, that's what it really is. Like, if you if you got this candy and like you know in the back of your head, like you're not gonna say this shit to my face. Yeah, then, you know, it, it, none of this stuff matters at the end of the day. Yeah, that's crazy. Shout out to. Uh, but yeah, y'all chill out, bro. I, we yeah. we know our community is right, y'all. We, we not yeah. y'all, 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 y'all cool, bro. Man. Y'all cool, bro. Y'all, y'all, y'all good. I know we give y'all shit sometimes, but hey, we'll take y'all over. Uh, <laughs> whatever weird, the fuck's bro. happening over there. Yeah, those weirdos. Y'all know. See? Who uh it's just video games anyways uh that's all we got on the show notes so we're about to wrap this one up so i can go hit the gym so you got the floor ethos what is your closing statement for gaming illuminati episode 121 go i just want to say shout out to jg my boys how close are you to the house getting into the house how close oh so we are planning on moving next saturday hey. hey okay okay that's gonna be fun i told jg as a housewarming gift i was gonna print him out that dm from the aisle and i was gonna frame it and send it to his house so like can, can we just acknowledge how long this Before podcast that. has been going on i'm so proud of this guy i remember when this nigga yeah. was hitting the nene in his nene, little, his little closet apartment, apartment yeah. back in st louis <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yo 10 years bro. later this man is buying a house it. tweeting about refrigerators and yeah. shit he got a kid bro. jesus oh, christ man. got stainless man. appliances i'm so proud bro, of this is old man, I, I was yeah. gonna be so lit though i can't believe i'm excited about this stuff no 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 i get it I, I was excited about being in costco the other day so like i get it like, oh my god man i was like yeah, this is kind of lit i went to costco today i was like man i want all this stuff it's just yeah. getting older like you just start to appreciate other things more uh, compared to uh, stuff indeed, you used to indeed. care about you just don't care about it no more yeah so you, you better come through bro you better come I'm through for the, to, house, uh, for the house warming yeah. you know them prices low with covid so you know i might drop prices by. um all right jay you got the floor what's your closing statement for episode uh, 21 so i am i am so happy that uh i, I didn't mentally die on this podcast because <laughs> it was it was rough uh watching the rams do what they did uh so like i probably would have been as engaged in the conversation that we would have lost i ain't even gonna lie my, my <laughs> mood would have been messed up they but, but, but yeah but luckily we won shout out to ethos uh you know in in the whole city of detroit for giving us matthew stafford because he won us you're a game welcome. you're welcome you're <laughs> so shout out welcome. to detroit <laughs> we owe y'all and we're gonna make it to the, we're gonna make it to the super bowl baby we're we got one more week seriously through y'all bro we definitely yeah. through y'all. that was our yeah, dream okay. We got one more week, so shout out, shout out to the Rams for uh, you're for, for now. You realize, not totally right? selling. I mean, you said you've been telling me every week when you I'm tweeting about Stafford. You're, so. you're tweeting about your team. It's not Stafford. It's Stafford. Stafford. I'm like, you're a Lions fan. <laughs> you don't. Bro, <laughs> That's the Lions it's, fan, bro. It's it's been rough. It's been good, but uh-huh. it's been it's been a lot of yeah. bash at the end of the season. Yeah. Bro. <laughs> uh-huh. yeah. You'll get used to the cycle. It's gonna happen every year. You're gonna. Yes, yeah, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. Um, but but on another note regarding the podcast, again, we appreciate everybody for listening. Uh, make sure once again because you all do not know the impact of you know just just doing a little thing like just hitting five stars on spotify for the podcast like i said we we've already gotten some emails like we're, we're in talks about some things y'all so you know like i said your support goes a long way you don't uh, you may not think that you're doing a lot with uh you know just doing something as simple as you know uh rating the podcast but you all are making moves and uh and i really hope that this podcast continues to grow and uh you know we ultimately grow our audience and uh and get to new levels because we've been we've been working hard for a lot of years uh tbh already mentioned like you know i was doing a name in 2014 in st louis and now look and now look where i'm at and uh you know we're doing the podcast for a long ass time so so i just want to continue to see this grow and i want to continue to see uh my boys prosper hey and last but not least my closing statement for episode 121 
if uh, you made it to the end of the episode, you know, at the beginning, I said, let's get it to 1200 likes. We're at 900 and something right now. 943, I believe. I said likes uh, five star ratings. Go on Spotify and rate the podcast five stars. Next time we drop an episode, we better be at 1200 five star ratings. At least I want to see more. But we got to do that. Move us up the algorithm. We're trying to move up them Spotify charts because Spotify is like becoming the biggest platform for podcasts. And there's a lot of opportunities. We've already gotten one opportunity strictly yes, from sir. moving up that Spotify chart. So we really appreciate if y'all would do that for us. Go rate the show five stars. Other than that, we appreciate you coming through as usual. And we'll see you on the next episode of the Gaming Illuminati podcast. Peace.